Um, with just five years to go, the countdown to 2015 for achieving the Millennium Development Goals is bearing down on us, heightening our collective sense of urgency to accelerate reduction in maternal and newborn mortality. Slide, please. Um, just keep clicking. I want to. Okay. Right. Thanks. This is called a 3D approach. Some of you have seen it. Um, USAID's strategic approach to scaling up maternal and newborn health interventions has three dimensions. First, we focus on rapidly scaling up selected high-impact evidence-based interventions within existing system, system capacity at all levels of the health system. That is, even where systems are weak, some interventions can be phased in at near term and long term through community-based approaches and through additional inputs in health facilities to improve quality of services. And so you can see that uh, we've num I've numbered that as uh, number the, the first, the front of that cube is the first dimension. The second dimension, we strengthen health systems for increased expansion <coughs> and sustainability of services. And the third dimension, we address social, behavioral, and environmental determinants that influence the utilization of health services linking with non-health programs such as girls' education, women's literacy, economic empowerment, water and sanitation, etc., that affect health outcomes. What does this have to do with technology? <coughs> well, this 3D approach to programming is the foundation of how we operationalize our programs. Technologies will remain technologies until they are transformed into effective, life-saving interventions through programs that make it available at large scale and that address systems issues as well as social and behavioral issues. USAID has supported the development, introduction, and expansion of several technologies, some of them you saw today, to reduce maternal and newborn mortality. These include the development of UNIJACT as a simple <coughs> delivery mechanism to expand community-based access to newborn infection management and to postpartum hemorrhage. We have supported operations research to test the feasibility of community-based distribution <coughs> of mesoprostol to prevent postpartum hemorrhage, clean delivery kits to reduce maternal and newborn infections, chlorhexidine to reduce newborn infections, and we're currently looking at the use of cell phone technology <coughs> to improve maternal and newborn care. To scale up any of these, we ask ourselves many questions. Will this technology reduce mortality? Are there global and national recommendations and policies that will facilitate or impede the introduction and expansion of this technology? How will governments procure the technology? Will it be available in the public sector or in the private sector? Are new skills required among health providers to use this new technology? Are new behaviors required among users? Who's going to pay for the introduction and expansion of the technology? Would it be the government? Would it be donors or users? How would we know when we have succeeded or failed in scaling up this technology? What is the national rollout plan? What is USAID's role in supporting the country? So there are many, many questions we grapple with when we see a really neat little gadget that's come into the market. Um, I will give you an example. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, I'd like to focus on one newborn technology to illustrate how we have addressed these questions. Some of you have seen this, some of you have heard me talk about it, some of you are part of it. Um, and in fact, uh, administ Administrator Raj Shah had mentioned this particular activity, this initiative, uh, recently at his, uh, his speech at CS CSIS. And I want, he just mentioned it very briefly. But I want to talk a little more about it as an example of how we deal with these questions. One of the major causes of newborn mortality is birth asphyxia. About 10 million babies need resuscitation and only about 12% in Africa, 12% of newborns who need resuscitation actually receive it. So we know that this is a, a life-saving intervention 
but very really not available. And there is evidence that resuscitation reduces newborn mortality by about 35% and possibly even more. But unlike life-saving interventions such as breastfeeding and clean core care that require primarily behavior change among family members, scaling up newborn resuscitation is more challenging because it requires provider skills, it requires appropriate equipment, and system strengthening. Challenged by this, we searched for a feasible and effective <coughs> approach to scale up newborn resuscitation, and we found the answer. <coughs> Within USA, we found the answer in an approach called the Global Development Alliance. It's basically a public-private sector, public-private partnership approach, but elevated to a global level. <coughs> 